Good evening. The time is now 6pm and South Australia is in lockdown. Authorities pulling the trigger after a community COVID transmission within a city restaurant confirming it's the highly contagious Delta strain. And they're now in a race to stop it spreading like wildfire. We're coming to you live from Rundle Mall tonight where most businesses are firmly shut and will stay that way for at least seven days. Exposure sites and thousands now in isolation. We have reporters covering every angle of this unfolding event. The cluster number as of now sits at five. Harvey, Be Harvey Biggs begins our coverage. A grim-faced Premier armed with a harsh order. We have to act decisively. We have to act quickly if we're going to stamp this Delta variant out here in South Australia. As South Australia slept, a fourth and then a fifth case emerged. That one, contracted through a transmission between diners at the Greek on Halifax on Saturday night, proved the tipping point. We have no alternative but to impose some fairly heavy and immediate restrictions to take effect from 6pm tonight. South Australia moves into lockdown. For the next week there are now just five reasons you're allowed to leave home. They include being an essential worker, buying essential goods such as food, getting urgent medical care as well as getting a COVID test or going to a vaccination appointment and to act as a carer. Exercise outside is allowed but only with someone from your household. We hate putting these restrictions in place but we believe we have just one chance one chance to get this right. Schools are closed tomorrow and online homeschooling will start on Thursday. Elective surgery is cancelled. This is the time not to move around. The virus doesn't have legs. It moves around when people move around. So if we stay put, the virus will stop and we'll be able to get on top of it. The cluster began with an 81-year-old man who returned from Argentina via a quarantined hospital stay in Sydney. Then his daughter and two close contacts from there. One of them dining at the Greek with a group celebrating a birthday, unknowingly passing the virus to a man in his 60s. This gentleman was in the same private function area um, as one of our cases. This is the potential for a super spreader event at the Greek um, on Halifax. QR codes, credit card details and CCTV is now being checked. Because we want to get 100% of people that were there on that evening um, tested and into quarantine. As of mid-afternoon today, authorities were in contact with more than a 1,000 people through check-ins across all of the exposure sites and 2,000 others had self-identified also entering isolation. They join 800 NSA in quarantine because they have been at a Victorian exposure site get tested and stay in quarantine until we get um, in contact with you. Modbury's emergency department, where the first case emerged in the early hours of yesterday, is back open, but 57 staff and nine patients are in Medi hotels. A dozen paramedics still quarantining too. The number of South Australians who will be asked to isolate over the coming days only expected to grow. We do need to work together. We are facing an extraordinary challenge at the moment, but I'm 100% convinced that South Australians will rise to the challenge. Harvey Biggs is here with us now. Harvey, as we go to here, what's the latest from SA Health? Well, Brenton, we've had no update from SA Health this afternoon of any new cases, and hopefully no news is good news. We know SA Pathology can now process around 18,500 COVID tests every day, so the next 24 to 48 hours will be essential to see if and where this virus is spreading. Now, if you want to know if you are an essential worker, all of that information can now be found on the SA Police website. Brenton? Yeah, wealth of information. Harvey, thank you. And the virus has already taken another step onwards from that key site of concern, the Greek on Halifax. Contact traces led to a new exposure site this afternoon, this time in the western suburbs. Tom Angley is in Highmarsh for us tonight. Tom, the man worked at the Mills on Wheels there. He did, Brenton. He was working in the kitchen yesterday morning, having attended the Greek on Halifax on Saturday night. And that's prompted a quick response from authorities. Workers have just left this site just a few minutes ago. They were in full hazmat gear. They were undergoing a deep clean of the site, taking absolutely no chances. The man who worked here, he's in quarantine now. Alongside other volunteers and staff members who may have been working alongside him, they're being urged to get tested and isolate if required. As for customers, 
members. Well, they're being urged to monitor for symptoms if they received meals from this site yesterday. But Meals on Wheels is assuring the public that the services they provide will continue under strict guidelines. Now, this is just one site of a growing number of exposure sites right across the state. Contact tracing in full swing, a police officer talking to a worker at our latest hotspot. The race on to find everyone who is at the Greek on Halifax on Saturday night. The QR check-in system put to the test. So this is really supercharged contact tracing. The exposure period between 6 and 10pm, anyone who is there needs to isolate. Out north, the Manopara Caltex underwent a deep clean today with workers in full hazmat. It's been caught up in a series of exposures along the shopping strip. The shopping centre itself on the weekend, and in particular the Foodland, Smoke Mart and TAB between 9 and 11.30 Saturday and Sunday morning between 10.45 and midday. The neighbouring service station on Saturday morning, Dan Murphy's too on both days before 12. If they're closed, I won't be going in. So it's as simple as that. So they, uh, they're closed, are they? Thanks very much, I won't be going in. A bit scary, scary. I'd rather not do it, but I need to be in the bank yet, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Similar scenes in Craigmore. The Tops Shops Deli closed due to a half-hour exposure window on Saturday from 11 and 45 minutes of concern the following morning. At Greenacres, another supermarket, those who shopped at the Coles on Friday afternoon put on notice. In Ridgehaven, the chemist warehouse was closed, a short 20-minute period late on Sunday, enough to put the public at risk. Exposure too at a One Tree Hill winery for anyone enjoying a Sunday session. And while Tea Tree Gully Council is not an official exposure site, a staff member has tested positive, its staff sent home and cleaning commenced. And a warning tonight, exposure sites are only expected to increase the advice keep your phone close for any text alerts. They're not spam. If you get an SMS from SA Health, you need to respond to it. Tom Angley, Nine News. Schools and childcare centres are also now closed for all but a select few. Ella Duffy students will be switching to online learning within days. Brent and they will. Online learning will begin on Thursday. Tomorrow will be a pupil-free day with teachers given 24 hours to prepare for that transition. And these rules apply to every single school, preschool and childcare centre right across the state, both public and private, with only a few exceptions. Some schools and childcare centres will operate with just a skeleton staff to care for children who are vulnerable and children of essential workers. But those parents and students who now face a week of home learning are mostly supportive of the move. I think that's a good idea. I think we should keep our, um, our, city, our city safe and especially for the children. It is a challenge especially if you still have to go to work but um, it, it will be over quicker if we do this now. This is our first time starting for home so I'm kind of nervous but really um, like interest is what's going to happen. I think that it'll be annoying not being able to come to school and like seeing your friends and your teacher in real life but I think like it's just going to be seven days. Brenton, these measures will remain in place for at least a week meaning that schools won't reopen until at least next Wednesday.